You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by NewTek, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, welcome back to CES Live. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm Renee Ritchie. And I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I should probably be losing my voice, but you're not so lucky today. Right. So uh, we have some great stuff coming up for you. Uh, I, you again, giveaways, eb.tv slash contest, you know all sorts of stuff. I have a Scotty vest. So Did you not see me put it on earlier and demo it? it? I was like modeling men, it. For women. I know. All the Scotty vests. Fantastic. Um, but right now, I, I just want to get right into our next guest because we have something really cool that we haven't even shown yet. Uh, we have Brian from Celestron. Hello. Welcome. Hi, good. So for anybody who isn't familiar with Celestron, which is, it is a very uh, widely known name, mm -hmm. but just for, you know, somebody living on Mars. Yeah, on Mars, absolutely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, back at us from Mars. if you're looking right. back or if you're looking at Mars from Earth, right? Yeah, or if you're like Doctor Who and you're, yeah, never mind. There's, there's some <laughs> space time stuff going on there, yeah. Well, Celestron primarily deals with uh, telescopes and accessories for amateur astronomy. And uh, we also make binoculars, we make cameras, uh, we have uh, microscopes and science products. We're good at lenses. Uh, yes, <laughs> we're good at lenses. We've been doing it for a long That's time. That's an understatement, yeah. right? And we have, some, you know, we have some key technologies that are unique to Celestron and some of our optics, some of our computerized uh, telescope technology. And, and how long have you guys been in business? For a long time? Oh yeah, for a long time, I over 40 years. 40 yeah. years, yeah. 40 years. <laughs> So I, I just keep getting distracted. I don't know about you, Renee. I keep just getting distracted by this thing on it's, his T-shirt Oh, I know. We, a lot of people have been uh, asking me about I'm this, like, actually. I'm like, what did you say? I'm viewing little <laughs> segments of... Is that a 4K of, television? I, if only. <laughs> I want one of these for myself. But we've been, uh, we're excited about it. We're promoting uh, the, the launch of uh, the new television series, Cosmos, this year. Nice. Oh. And many of you are probably familiar with the original TV series from 1980 that's still popular today. I don't know. And I wasn't born yet. Billions but even then, billions of exactly. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Carl Sagan, who could, who could forget Carl Sagan? And now uh, it, the next generation of Cosmos is coming out this year on Fox. Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to be the new Carl Sagan. How about that? Fantastic. So, uh, in celebrating that, we actually have some officially licensed products with Cosmos. And okay. the flagship of that line is our, uh, the Cosmos 90GT. It's this a Wi-Fi operated refractor telescope. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> None of my telescopes had Wi-Fi, Kelly. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even have a telescope. That's a first, though. That's actually a first. <laughs> uh, to have a telescope actually have the Wi-Fi built in, uh -huh. And now, of course, what that means is you can control it with your tablet, with your smartphone. Okay, so I could have an app on my, uh, your app mm -hmm. on my iOS device or Android device, mm -hmm. and uh, from afar, what, from like uh, anywhere, move it? Can I? Oh, from just so, if, so I normally, in, as you're using the telescope, you'd, you know, you look through the telescope using the eyepiece, you get awesome views of the moon, of, of the rings of Saturn, you can see all those things, but normally, if you have a computerized telescope, you'd have to inter you'd have to use either a computer, you'd like a full-on computer, clack, clack, clack. exactly, or or a hand controller with like keypads. Right. But you don't have a beautiful display of like what a new app will do. Speaking of display, I have a word. Uh, I have a bone to pick with Gorilla Glass. I'm just kidding. Uh -oh. We're hard. Oh, we're hard oh, on it. We can walk you over. <laughs> <laughs> we're hard on our stuff oh, here yeah, in R and D. Here. But that's a. Uh, Renee, can you get uh, up close and personal on that? There? Just so that we have some evidence when we this walk is, by. This is how <laughs> this is how well we treat our, our products in R and D. Right. You know, that we, it, it has Johnny to survive. Right it has now, to survive right? all the abuse. You know, uh, <laughs> so it's part of the process for us. The same thing goes with our with our telescopes, uh, dragging them up on mountaintops and everything. But when you have a beautiful app to control your telescope, yeah. as opposed to just a hand controller, it changes things around a little bit. So here's the Cosmos, is the Space Time Odyssey, is the new television series. You have this, um, you have we're this. We're not quite yeah, seeing that. Brighter. Oh yeah, let's get. Um, yeah, let's get that brighter. Move that brightness up. Yeah, I might be able to. I actually had go to settings. Let's go to settings, and I think it's doing an auto Hold, brightness. Hold, please. This is going to be awesome and worth doing the wait. We're turning up the light level in here. space. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Let me see. Display. Wallpapers and brightness. Same. Wallpapers and brightness. Who's right the there. iOS There we go, there we go. Yeah, and just crank iMore. that. There we go, full. Whoa. There we go. All right, we took it to 11. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's working better. Got to there take we it go. To 11. Okay, there we go. You have a beautiful display here. So uh, it's very intuitive. Let's say, uh, first of all, let me back up to align the telescope. 
just pointed at any three bright stars you see in the sky. Okay. You don't have to know what they are, where they are. Like, there's a star, align it. There's a star. Do that to three stars. Once you've done that, now you have this interface, and it will show you where everything is in the night sky. Um, you can sync it to the sky if I chose compass, and it's going to move to the ground now. But if I move it, let's say I, I move it up, I don't know what the lighting will look like. But you can see yes. that's actually synchronized with the sky in real time. Oh, wow. And I'll move it back. I'm going to turn point compass off. that it off. is dark because you don't want it blinding you when you're outside in the middle of the night. Certainly. Your tech but do you have that? To, teacher is asking in the chat room, do you have to go outside? I mean, basically. Well, to use, use the app, you don't have to go outside at yeah. all to use the app. If you happen to be controlling the telescope, you will be outside right. as you're looking through it. But, but that's, you could just run inside if it's really cold. And <laughs> yeah, that's a good, you know, you could plan like, oh, your, you could awesome. plan what you want to see when you're inside because it would, you know, might be cold out, yeah. and uh, you it is a free app. what you want to see, and then take it outside. Oh, and is you that can like drawing the? It's, yeah, it's showing the so the constellations. It's showing like the mythical constellations in in drawing form. You can change that to you know the standard like stick figure constellations. But this is a little bit cooler. Uh, but really, the the beauty of this is look. See, here's the moon. If I wanted to, if I wanted to go to the moon, I tap on it as I just done. If I was connected right now to the telescope, which I'm not, I don't have that hooked <laughs> up. But I could literally just tap on the moon as I've done and have a click go That's to the telescope will slew right to it. <gasps> That um, is awesome. And now I have all the information. Oh, the moon. I want to read more a little about that. And I have a lot of in-depth detail about it. So this app by itself is really nice. It's going to be a free app that's offered in um, the Apple App Store and, and Google Play for Android. And this by itself is a really cool app. But the real magic is having all of this and being able to then control the telescope. So you've yeah. made me able to find the moon as quickly as a trained astronomer. That's right. <laughs> that's amazing. That's right. <laughs> Even though the moon, I, we, most of us probably could find the moon, but the fact no, that you can just, uh, yeah, you can just align you. it in a split second. And yeah. the same goes for even you know, uh, things beyond the solar system. You can go after this telescope has a 90 millimeter uh, lens, which is big enough to see beyond our solar system. You wow. can get some of the brighter uh, deep sky objects, which would include Thank nebulas you. and galaxies. So uh, you know, going back into the billions of billions terminology, <laughs> some of that really does apply when we start talking these huge distances. I can make first contact. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to do it, Renee. I am, I'm trying. You get that, you're going to do it. It looks like a cannon. It's it amazing. It does look like a cannon. So what are these uh, control uh, knobs on the edge right there? On yeah, so we've got, there's a couple things, but the uh, the design of the telescope. So in the new, in the near, the new series of Cosmos of Space Time Odyssey, and you can see some of the previews now on uh, the uh, Fox Studios uh, website, there's a, there's a spaceship of the imagination in the show. And or the, the acronym for that is SODI. We've actually designed that is that's actually a side profile of the spaceship of the imagination oh, nice. that you will see in the Cosmos series, and it's it's used in almost all the episodes. It's a that's one of the big like instruments of the show. You use your imagination to travel through space and time. So anyway, that's on the telescope. There are three LEDs that light up here that's indicating power and Wi-Fi connectivity. Okay. Um, and then nice. you've just got a power port, and if you do want to plug Ethernet in, connection. yeah, if you want to plug in your traditional hand controller, as we have amateur astronomy Celestron, we have our hand controllers. You can do that, but for the most part, you won't need to. It won't come with one because you'll just use your smart device and a free app, and it really does change the way you interact with your scope. So how much is it? It's three ninety nine ninety five. Wow. Three, okay. I would have guessed much higher. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, and uh, looks like you uh, won a popular science product. Of yes, the we did Award. yesterday. Yes, Fantastic. and uh, Congratulations. yeah, we're very proud of that and excited to see what this product will bring. It being so intuitive, intuitive as it is, I think a lot of people will will take to this. Like you say, you want to find the moon or anything. Children, uh, especially, it's going to take the work out for you. You get to the fun stuff. Yeah. You can just start using the app and the telescope right away. Your first night out, you're going to be looking at all sorts of cool things. So, what do you think the future is of astronomy in terms of all this new stuff that we're seeing. Yeah, it's going to be moving more towards this, more of an uh, interactive experience with media that you already have. But th the reality is still looking through the eyepiece and seeing it for yourself. But having these tools make that easier for you, bring it more to within reach. Uh, I want the Hubble on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> all, it's all moving in that direction. And you know, there are, of course, cameras and things you can use too, but there's really nothing more, more tangible, more realistic than seeing it for yourself. So imagine watching one of the episodes uh, coming up uh, this spring in, in March, and then going to your telescope and seeing it for yourself. Oh, I can yeah. fact check Tyson. Yes, there you go. <laughs> you can see, you know, okay, the Galilean satellites around Jupiter. There they are. Three degrees, sir, not four. <laughs> 
in, in, in normal technology and gadgetry technology, mm. like with phones and stuff, we're seeing uh, more devices do more mm. in one device. Um, is that ever going to play into astronomy? Where it, I mean, obviously, we're adding Wi-Fi already. Right. So what that's else that's a huge step do? in that direction. Well, you know, there are um, people obviously add cameras to their telescopes. Mm -hmm. They might a camera. In fact, iPhones. People are holding their iPhone up to the uh, telescope, but there there are going to be ways of integrating these things more and more and more. So yeah. it just becomes easier to get. I want to share photos with my friends, or I want to you know I want to find a way to. How do I find these objects? How do I use the telescope? All these things are becoming a lot easier and more accessible. I'd love to share what and I see on the telescope. Oh, totally. The that price point awesome. too. That's something to work on too. For you know, four hundred dollars essentially for what your uh, automated computerized telescope is a lot more affordable than it would have been years ago. Oh, and with absolutely. this app, kids can get involved from very young age. It's absolutely. Well, thank you, Brian, so much. Oh, thank this you. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, the chat room loves it, and they're they're. They thinking, want it now. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Terrific. I think, I think oh. we all want. Can we have one for the entire team around here? <laughs> I'll have to check my with my boss. I right, never exactly. get a true custom, sadly. <laughs> That's true. Thank you so much uh, for thank coming you. on. I hope you have a great rest of the CES, and congratulations again on your award. Terrific. Thanks. You guys, uh, be sure to stay tuned for the rest of what we've got here at CES Live. Before we go. I just want to uh, send a quick out uh, thank you to Sadio. Sadio. Sadio, you have a different case than I do. I do. Well, I, I have a battery pack. You have a stand case. I like that one. I do. It's, it's very convenient. It's easy to put on. It's easy to put off. When you don't want the stand, it's hidden away completely, still nice looking. Then you just flip it out and you put it on and they have colors uh, that match the different colors of the iPhone. They don't get in your way, but they do protect it. Even from, you know, I can drop it face down and yeah. it's fine. <laughs> that is awesome. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you, Sadio. We, we're loving um, all of our stuff. And, and what I like about them is that they have all sorts of different options, yes. right? You, you're using the iPhone, I'm using the Note 3, and they've got they've got us covered. Something for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and they also have some charging docks and stuff like that. So go to sadioonline.com to see if yours is there, and you can actually win. Yes some today. So uh, geeky.tv slash contest, we're giving away five Sadio cases a day. A plethora of cases for you and you. For you and you. You get a case, you get a case, you get a case. Get a case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Callie Lewis. I'm Renee Ritchie. We'll see you soon.